we, we went to church. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that was the whole life. And there wasn't no, uh, uh, do you want to go to church? I mean, that was a, you had to go to church. Yeah. <laughs> there was no question about, I don't want to go today, you go. And I said, as you can see from the certificates, everybody had perfect attendance. <laughs> 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 I mean, even Harold and Henry and all of them had perfect attendance at Sunday school. Boy, you were you were there unless you were deathly sick. <laughs> so uh, that was uh, <laughs> that was our our life. Uh, Baptists or what? Uh, what kind of uh, religion did they, they have? They were Baptists. Our grandparents were Baptists. And how did they happen to become Baptists in a Lutheran? Because everybody is uh, Lutheran otherwise in Sweden. Yeah, but you know, the Baptist Church in Sweden, they, they started 1854, 1848. 1848, 1848 the Baptist 1848, Church. 1848, they uh -huh. had the first, uh, they were baptized. Mm -hmm. So, um, they were the Baptist. Oh, how the children work. Was it a big church there in, in where they lived? A big Baptist church? I don't think so. There wasn't many the, Baptists? No, there uh -huh. was just a few. Yeah. And they have a hard time, you know, they put them in prison and, and they were not uh, accepted to stay at church. Mm -hmm. So they have a bad time. There was a reason why many come over here. They like freedom for church. Oh, I see. They couldn't have any meetings like they have here. Mm -hmm. So that's why they came over. Mm mentioned before that uh, over in Sweden, the reason she came over here um, was that uh, they were Baptists? They, they, they were Baptists and uh, they were the only Baptist family in this community uh, and were, uh, were almost treated as outcasts. And uh, I was told that uh, the uh, Erickson boys were always getting in fights with, with others because they were sort of outcasts in a way. Uh, because they were going against the uh, the uh, the tide, just like a, a communist cell, I guess, in, 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 in a democracy that people will look down on. In the history of the Hillcrest Baptist Church, written by L. Lindbergh, he wrote, the belief in adult baptism by immersion was so strong among some of the Swedish immigrants of the 1860s and 70s that they could not accept any of the Swedish churches then existing in Jamestown. The Baptists had in fact been persecuted in Sweden. The state church frowned on their proselytizing. They were, they were alien and therefore undesirable. Yet the Baptists slowly gained ground in Sweden and a few of the converts came to Jamestown. The minister in the church come down to the station and met the Swedes when they came from Sweden mm -hmm. and invited them to the church and told them he was going to help them to get a job and get a place to stay. So that was very good for the immigrants. Mm -hmm. He was so concerned about the young people mm -hmm. and that somebody took care of them so they don't get in bed mm -hmm. uh, company. Would he know when a train came in then yeah. from Sweden? They know when they came from Sweden. You know, they, they know when the boats come in mm -hmm. to this country. And she was 16 years old and, and um, came over 1900. And um, she come with a minister. She worked for a minister in Sweden. and. Uh, they asked her to help with the children when they were moving to America. And we sh when she come over here, they uh, told her to go out and, and have a job for they couldn't afford to have her. Jamestown, he met mother at Chandler Street Baptist Church. And he gave her a diamond ring on the hospital hill here. No kidding. <laughs> huh? That's terrific. Uh, and a mid on a midsummer night, they were married the following Thanksgiving in 1911. Devotion to Christ. Of course, as a youngster, <clears throat> Dad was our Sunday school superintendent there at Chandler Street Baptist Church. And I remember uh, learning the, the Lord's Prayer in Swedish first. And uh, I remember Dad leading the services. I'll never forget. 
how he used to get up early on Sunday morning, you know, and, and he would make breakfast for the whole family, and uh, uh, and we would get our meals, mom was getting us all ready, and then we would make a trip to church, and then he would make uh, another trip or two or even three to pick up kids and bring them to Sunday school. And you probably will remember at his funeral, several came to me and said, Harold, if it had not been for your father, uh, I would not have become a Christian. <laughs> His concern for uh, church and Sunday school. I mean, he was, I think, he would start the Sunday schools, he would be the one who would go around and pick up kids in the, at the Buick. He had, they had little jump seats. And he used to pack about 10 or 12 kids in that car. I mean, and, you know, it was a, I remember now, it was a Spitz Kids. He lived on Wilton. And every once in a while, when Dad couldn't drive, he'd pick us up. And it was the uh, Pillsbury. Pillsbury kids, like Lawrence and Merle and Charlie. And then the Spitz kids, there was Paul and Bob and Elmer and the whole, the whole group. Of he'd make two trips with that. And then big the, the, the course, yeah. went, uh, And then he went to church and taught Sunday school class. Taught Sunday school class. Or the, uh, I mean, the Sunday school school kind of job. Yeah. And, on August 13, 1989, Reverend Robert Hales gave a sermon at the Hillcrest Baptist Church wherein he remembered Grandpa Carlson. Reverend Hales was the minister of the then Chandler Street Baptist Church from 1952 through 1957. My church said about this dear man, he had a seven passenger Buick and that was a Sunday school bus. Sunday morning, he and his family and uh, uh, some of the children in the neighborhood uh, would gather together in that living room. He'd have a word of prayer. Then they'd run out to see who could get the best seat in the bus. He'd take them to church, unload them, and go out and pick up another load and bring back the second load and unload them. And then he was Sunday school superintendent. And after two loads in his bus, he would run the Sunday school. And he was just that kind of man, just a godly man. And I had the privilege of conducting his funeral. And I talked about this, and I referred to him as a man in whom there is no guile. He was a tremendous man. Generation number one. I'm going to make it back in time for the third load up to Sweet Hill Way. He'd ask Gordon Marker to start the singing. He'd ask, yeah, and he'd soon be there. There he picked up Linus Danielson, which was a teacher, Ruth and Marie Carlson and Rags, and Dad would come running up on the basement platform, ready to take over. We had Who's New Today, that was the welcome, and birthdays, and we sang dropping, 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 hear the pennies fall, everyone for Jesus, he will get them all. Did you know that song? No, that's a first. Yeah. Then we'd say the Lord's Prayer in Swedish, sing a Swedish song, especially, Jesus Elskar alla born. And uh, born is Sunda Skolan. It's on page 151 of the Fried Rister songbook. And then he stressed perfect attendance. And if we were sick, to bring an excuse, then we wouldn't get marked absent. At the end of the year, we were awarded perfect attendance pins, seals for our diplomas, if we missed one Sunday, it was a gold seal. If we only missed two Sundays, it was a silver seal. That's for the whole year. Yeah. And we had these diplomas on our walls in our bedroom at home, and we added to it every year. Can you remember that, Wilbur? Yes. Then after opening, we all went to classes for 45 minutes. Often, Dad had to teach if someone hadn't showed up. During his 13 years as Sunday School Superintendent, he took many teachers to the National Sunday School Convention meetings. Guard uh, Anderson Scully gave me uh, this prayer that she said uh, our dad, when he was Sunday School Superintendent, greeted uh, or opened every Sunday School uh, program with this greeting at the Swedish Baptist Church. And she wrote it out 
and gave it to me. And it says, Tak shed a good third third monet gift to us at V for Murta Uti Shada Sundog School for at Lassa Oklara Mer on Dig. And this is the English translation. Thanks, dear God, for the privilege given us that we may meet in dear Sunday school, that we may read and learn more about thee. And I thought that was kind of uh, special that she said, to this day, she still remembers that prayer that uh, Dad used to uh, greet the people when he opened Sunday school when he was superintendent. Early, when I was young, it was, it was in Sweden. Uh -huh. We went to morning service at 11, and that was Sweden. Then we went to the young people's service at 5, that was in English. Uh -huh. But the evening service was the Swedish again. And it, it was always expected that we attend all those services. Oh, sure. And uh, they always served coffee after the young people's meeting. And uh, uh -huh. then they had a sort of a little prayer service at 7, so that those who wanted, it, you know, to get ready for the evening service could, 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 could go there. And, uh, Noted pastors during this time period was Reverend J.P. Zetterval, Reverend Arvid Edstam, and Reverend V.E. Hedberg. Hey, uh, rounding up children for Sunday school at the old Swedish Baptist Church, or Chandler Street Baptist Church. Uh, his children got left behind, remember that? He'd go all over town, get them to Sunday school, come back and get you kids. But your mother never had time to go. She had to be home Sunday dinner and have that on the table when you mm -hmm. came home. Plus, anybody that your dad mm -hmm. would ask for mm -hmm. Sunday dinner. <laughs> I don't know how she ever, of course, she was constantly baking bread and biscuits. For a while, Mother was keeping home fires ago. If any out-of-town people were in church, to be sure, they had to come home for dinner. He'd call Mom and tell her to put on four or five more were coming. She'd peel a few more potatoes and put more plates on the dining room table. And we always had white linen tablecloth and napkins for Sunday dinner. It was a precious time. Sometimes if a lot of people come, she'd call the kids into the kitchen and say, take just a few potatoes the first time around. Then the second time, if there's any left, you can have them. Was she active in the church? In the ladies' day. Yes, time. yeah, she was real active in the, the problem was they would, being a, a they, the only social life that they had was their church. So they would, uh, the ladies' age, they used to work so hard when they entertained at ladies' age to see how many members they could get to. And your dad was very active in Sunday school. When we were small, mother would go to church with dad Sunday night. Elsie or Esther Sandberg would stay with us. And once a month on Thursday, mom had ladies' aid, and that was mom's time to go out alone. After the meeting, she'd shop with Aunt Secret. C.S. was very, very self-conscious about his English. And when he gave his testimony, no one paid any attention to his English. And, and the life he lived was a marvelous example of how a Christian should live. His tender heart. One, one time we had special meetings in church, and I was just a little boy at that time. And when the, when the speaker asked for those who wanted to come forward and rededicate their lives to Christ, I saw my father come walking down the aisle. And I says, why does my dad, I said to myself, why does dad have to go forward? Well, he was my ideal. I mean, if there was any Christian, that was my dad. Why should he have to go forward and rededicate his life to Christ? When we got home, he gathered the family together, and he said, you know, I just uh, have not been the father that I want to be and that I feel God wants me to be. And I, I've asked God to forgive me and I want you to forgive me as a family. Boy, my estimation of dad went sky high at that time. I'll never forget that.